hey there Danko Stu here. Today's video is about getting back to working on my trawler and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Ed and I are going to cruise up my boat today. Just got back from Bundaberg and, you know, easing into things. Have a little look at the other fishing fleet as we go past. Mostly uh, prawn and squid trawling around here. All the boats pretty similar length to mine, about 30 foot. Maybe some a little bit smaller even, high 20s. Got quite a few odd jobs to do today and what I really like to do, just as a bit of a morale boost, is get the prop shaft and the rudder back in. I feel like that'll be another bit of a milestone to feel like we're actually getting somewhere. What do you think Ed? You keen? slow tide at the moment. Here I've got the heat exchanger and the old wet exhaust sitting on these rubbing strakes and my ballast weight on the end. This has been sitting like this the whole time I was up in Bundaberg seeing Damien and Jess. So I'm going to get that off now, put it onto some saw horses, cut the ends and start oiling it ready to go back on the boat. You can see what a great lump of a pong box this boat had. Huge amount of internal space gone. All right, I'm gonna get the lead off the ends of the timbers now, get them on the stands, cut the ends and start oiling them. It's a bit stinky down here, Ed. the circular saw set to a bit of a jaunty angle. Then I'm just gonna measure off here. The rubbing strip sort of ended, I don't know, about four inches from the last bolt hole. It's not super critical, but I'll give it about the same, I think. Yes, I know it's sacrilege using a Sharpie on timber, but I can't find a pencil. I'm actually cutting just inside the line anyway, so there's no remnant of it on the timber. This saw blade's hideously blunt too, unfortunately, but we'll get a couple more cuts out of it, then I'll bin it. I had it actually split a little fragment off on the other end, so I had to epoxy it back in. So I'm just going really slowly at the ends. When I go to the hardware store to get a new blade, I'm also gonna buy a little plug drill so I can drill some 25 mil plugs and cover the heads of the bolts with the same timber as the strips. Plan now is to flip them over and then just cut, say, the last centimeter off so it's not a straight edge, it sort of comes across then down just a little bit. So, just about yay.
And so this is sort of what it's going for. Just think it's a bit better than a straight cut and doesn't have the fragility of coming to a point. Now I'm just gonna chuck a few coats of linseed oil on. up to Hornsby now just to buy a few things for the boat. It is funny, you watch Eddie Lee in every corner. You'd be a good surfer, Eddie. Lean. Oh, left-hander. Lean the other way. Lean. Nice work, Eddie. Ed, what are you doing? Mate. No. Look at you. Look at the state of you. Oh, you're dreaming. Don't get too close. Oh, you're an idiot. You, my friend, are a world-class idiot. Don't look so pleased with yourself. So we can get ready to put the prop shaft back in. I'm going to clean up the prop shaft flange and the new stuffing box because they're both pretty rusty. Give them a clean with a wire wheel, bit of phosphoric acid. Then I think I'll actually just give them a bit of a white with diesel. I'm also going to do the flywheel at the same time. I managed to drop the angle grinder then with the switch locked on and put that wire wheel into my shin, which hurt a little bit. But the point is, people are used to go to me, oh, you know, you don't wear shoes when you work, you should wear shoes. And I was like, oh, well, you know, do you wear shin pads? And I think, what's so important about shoes? I think you're more likely to get hit in the shin. So I feel like I've had a win, proved my point. That's another tip for today. Don't leave your paintbrush sitting in the phosphoric acid. We'll leave that till tomorrow. It's actually supposed to be a sunny day tomorrow. It's a bit, a bit overcast today. So we'll let that dry. Then I'll wipe all the loose sort of black magnetite from the phosphoric acid off. I think that's what it is anyway. And then we'll do a wipe with diesel and get it all installed. Well, not the flywheel yet, because we're waiting for the engine. Ah, speaking of which, uh, what's happening there? You're probably wondering. Still at the engineers, I got a good source of parts, hang on, let me have a look. I've got there from these guys, really helped me out. Uh, got me everything I needed, price was reasonable. You know, this was a huge help. So CDA we've used for ages and between them and cutting edges, getting the bits, the engine's kind of on track to get back together. Ordered a camshaft from the US because I couldn't, uh, they had to order one anyway. So I got a second hand one for like 80 bucks, which I thought was pretty good. Now I'm just trying to find a harmonic balancer. There's a slightly different um, style showing up on the Cutting Edges website than the one installed, so we're just trying to nut that out. But once we get that sorted, should be back together. Uh, then I'll start throwing all the bits I've still got here onto it. And on the uh, Detroit diesel front, even cooler, Daniel Martin, a viewer, sent me one of these tune-up kits for the Detroits. So now we've got this kit and the service manual, we should be pretty right to, you know, get this thing up and running quite sweetly. So huge thanks to you, Daniel, that's really appreciated. And uh, look, there's a bit to know. People are always like, oh, be really careful if you don't know what you're doing, you know, you could be in trouble. 
spoke to a guy that Howley uses for his Detroit diesel. He lives down in Melbourne, but he's a real expert on them. And he said, look, you've got the service manuals. He said, if, I, if you follow it to the letter, and you know, you know, I am a mechanic, so it's like, you know what you're doing generally, in principle, follow the instructions to the letter and it won't run away on you. You know, you've always got things like your air shut off or putting the vice grips on the, the rack the way you see Scott do on uh, Bus Grease Monkey, shut the fuel off. You know, there's a few techniques to sort of save that happening if it does. But he said, look, people are worried about it, but if you're just careful and you follow instructions, it should be fine. So now having the tools, thanks to Daniel, we're pretty right to do that. All right, here's the nerve-wracking moment where we uh, hammer it in. Feels like it's about right to me. It's not gonna fall out, but it's not super tight. The worst thing that kind of happens is you hammer it in, you get to two thirds of the way and you can't get it any further. At which point, if you've got enough, at least half of the bearing in, according to Andrew, mate, mine was just here, just cut it off, you know. Think about maybe next year putting a full one in again and, you know, boring it out a bit more or whatever, but I think we'll see how we go. So, there we go. New cutlass bearing, new prop shaft bearing. Now what I think I'll do is slide the prop in without the stuffing box in at the other end at all. There's no top bearing, just the bottom bearing. And then we can start putting our rudder together. I've got to clean the prop up still. So I've bought a brand new uh, stainless wire cup, like the one that bit me yesterday. And um, I'll use that on the prop so it hasn't got any other metals impregnated in or anything like that. Get that cleaned up and then we'll put the prop in I've got a couple of products I'm going to use in that I've got a rope cutter to go on the prop shaft and I've also got an anti-foul for the propeller but I'm thinking that's probably going to be easier to apply once the propeller is installed and I can rotate it and it's off the ground. Before I get into cleaning up the prop which you may or may not be able to see behind me I thought I'd tell you the story of the glasses. So I bought these glasses as a joke because a mate was doing up a 1976 LTD. It's got a Cleveland V8 in it, and we rebuilt the engine, you know, put a new Edelbrock inlet manifold on, new comp cam, new Holly carburetor, all that kind of thing. So it's actually only about a week or so away from running, so I'll show you that when it is. I figured in the end you couldn't have a pink LTD called Sleazy without only a couple of pairs of sunglasses to match when you're cruising around, so I ordered these. Anyway, so I went up to Bundaberg, couldn't find any other glasses, grabbed them, hit the road. When I got up there, I uploaded the video while I was still in Bundaberg, and a few people commented, they said, oh, look, you can't, uh, you know, you can't show us sheep and cows and not show us kangaroos, you need something for the international viewers. And I thought, yeah, okay, that's fair enough. So Damien said, look, there's a family that live up in town, let's just jump in the ute, go up there and check them out. And we did, so I'll show you that. Damien and I are going looking for kangaroos for the uh, international viewers. Oh, there's one. We saw a whole heap yesterday. For the American viewers <laughs> out there, kangaroos Shut mainly up. eat drop bears. <laughs> they do eat drop bears, don't they? This one's having a scratch. Like, oh, no, I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Heard about you lot. Yeah, exactly. You boat owners are all the same. Sorry, dude. He's a pretty little one. Yeah. Oh, last story. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not a wildlife photographer. <laughs> Here you can see a joey in its mother's pouch. Feeding while its mother feeds. That's all I got. I don't know anything else about kangaroos. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Here's this dude having a scratch. That's it, scratch your butt. That's what we're here for. Juvenile out of the pouch, but still pretty small. Back to mum. Oh. So we got our footage. Now you've seen the local kangaroo herd, flock, I don't know what you call a group of kangaroos, posse of kangaroos in Bundaberg. On the way back from looking at the kangaroos, we were driving down the road and Damien said, look, I just go duck in and grab some petrol. So we pulled into a servo. And then when he got in the back of the car, he said, look, about those glasses, you know, you're trying to run a YouTube channel, like you've got to lift your game, you can't embarrass yourself wearing that kind of stuff. So I bought you some new ones while I was in the service station. And I thought, oh, that's cool, you know, good on you. You know, a nice gesture to sort of stop me uh, embarrassing myself with the, my own daggy choices. So thank you, Damien. I'll wear yours instead. So I feel like things have definitely come up a uh, notch in class. So we'll finish lunch and then we'll get this prop shaft in. I forgot to press record, sorry. But this bearing was a little bit loose, like not enough to fall out, but just a little bit loose. So I smeared some Sikaflex around the outside of it and then just slid it up and then we'll let that set. When I first bought these bearings, he said, look, if it's a bit loose, just put it in with some epoxy. He said, epoxy is more than strong enough to hold it in position during, you know, all sorts of strains and stresses it'll have during normal operation. But there isn't an epoxy around strong enough to resist the force of, of power tools when it comes time to remove it again. I thought, that makes good advice. Andrew was here, mate Andrew's buying the output off the back of the green machine. And he said often he actually uses Sikaflex as well. Sikaflex is an amazing sealant, but it's also a very strong adhesive. So I've just gone with Sikaflex because I had that here. And by the time that sets, it's not going to fall out. But what I do need to do now is get the rudder post in because I want to have the bottom and top bearings perfectly aligned as the Sikaflex sets. I don't want it to set, you know, slightly skew with and end up flogging a bearing out very quickly. So next step now, while it's still wet, is to get the new rudder post in. This is our shiny new all stainless rudder post to replace the mild steel one that had worn away, been eaten away, corroded away. The rudder on this boat, in case you don't remember, is stainless as well. So we're gonna have a stainless rudder, stainless rudder post. Once this has been installed, I'm gonna go up to the lazarette and connect the hydraulic steering, which will stop it dropping down again. Then we've got to install the prop shaft before we can put the rudder on. There we go. Let's pass. That was just knocking the edge of the top bearing by the looks of it. This is moving pretty easily, which is good, but it means I'm going to need to chock it up with something so it doesn't drop down while I run upstairs. I think that's a good height because it's lower than it needs to be but we can always lift it up from inside. We can't drop it down with this in the way. So we'll leave it there, jump inside and put the yoke back on. Just rotating this rudder post until the key here is on the port side. And then we put our yoke on. We'll have the key there on the port side too. But I can't put the yoke on until I get a new oil seal that goes around the very top just in here. Uh, there's not enough clearance here for me to get the yoke on, so I'm actually going to have to drop it down slightly, take a bit of timber out, drop it down, get the yoke on. Uh, no, I can't get that off afterwards either. I need the bear, I need the oil seal in first. Because once the rudder's in, it's all the way up, and I can't get the yoke on. So, need this oil seal. All right, I uh, went to measure the shaft so I can get another oil seal. I actually bought one. I thought I had one ready, but uh, can't find it. Thought I knew exactly where it was too, but you know, 
that's the way it goes anyway but the new battery I bought for the uh, Vernier calipers is already flat I think at the time I mentioned that when I put it in it was still flashing so I think it's just been on the shelf in the shop for a long time and it wasn't any good anyway so what we can do is clean up the prop here then we can get the prop shaft in once the prop shafts in we can actually drop the rudder post back down behind the prop to get the oil seal in next week so I'll get as far as I can it's now Friday afternoon I got back Wednesday because of the trip to Bundaberg so a bit of a short week but we may as well get as much done as we can That's got the bulk of the old anti-foul and barnacles and whatever off. When I was up in Bundaberg, the guy next door to Damien and Jess, I just saw him all day with a bit of sandpaper just, you know, rubbing his prop down. And I think it's worth it, to be honest with you, just getting it as clean as possible before the anti-foul goes on so it adheres well. So that'll be uh, next week's job, unfortunately, now, running out of time. But what I might actually do is just slide this prop in so we can see it and I think it's actually gonna make it almost easier to work on just to have it in there and be able to spin it comfortably in one position so let's go slide this in all right let's see if we can just move this off to the side Certainly heavy. All right, we've hit a little snag. I've put a bit of lubricant on this, but it's getting really tight in this bearing. And I think the reason is, you can feel here where the shaft's worn. Presumably the bearing's been machined for this slightly narrower section. And it gets, you know, a millimeter or so thicker here, which I think is more than enough to bind it up really tightly in the bearing. If the nut here wasn't completely welded on, we probably could have put the prop shaft in first, then slid the bearing in second, but we don't really have that choice. What I'm thinking I might try is, you know, it's a bit of a long shot, but I mean, it's now the end of a reasonably warm day. So I'm thinking what I might even try is come down here really early after one of the colder nights and just see if the prop shaft's contracted enough to be able to force it in. We'll see, otherwise we'll have to think of something else. It's now Saturday morning and I've taped a couple of bags of ice around the prop shaft. I'm going to leave those on while I go and have a really good look for those oil seals. I might be able to find them. I doubt they're lost, I just, they're just not where I thought I'd put them. So we'll leave that for half an hour or so, see if it makes any difference. If not, I think we're going to have to up to some dry ice or something like that. Okay, in my usual half-baked way, got the ice strapped on. Got the jack here trying to stop the prop shaft binding up by dropping, so I've got it lifted a really tiny amount, and then a fair bit of tension on a ratchet strap. So we'll see how that goes for a while. Maybe this isn't so half-baked after all. When I cranked the ratchet strap, it moved a little bit. Ah, and what also arrived from the US yesterday was the camshaft. So I'll run this out to CDA on Monday we're one step closer to getting this Detroit diesel back in action. It's amazing what a set of fresh eyes can do. New day. Found that oil seal straight away. So I'll go and pop that in and then we'll push the rudder post all the way up and just get that yoke back on just to hold it out of the way of the prop shaft. Obviously the prop shaft's going to be a bit of a struggle and having the rudder post up out of the way is going to make it a little bit easier. It's so nice having the wet exhaust out of the way. I've got to cut this off and this off but no longer have this big pong box sitting right in the middle. All right, got a bit of marine grease. So I've run out of gloves. Remind me to buy some on Monday. So just gonna grease the inside lip a little bit.
this is the very top of the rudder post you can see coming out and then we just got to knock that seal down there this is the water line of the boat I think kind of about here so this just stops any surges coming out get it as level as I can and then I'm just going to use this socket to tap it in I think this oil seals ever so slightly taller than the one that was in there but it's not going to be a problem all right let's push the rudder up now all right it's gone up through the oil seal easy enough which is good so pushed up through the oil seal didn't feel like I pushed the oil seal out which is great now we'll attach that yoke finally I've put the shaft just at this side so we can drop that down I'm going to push it right up We'll get the shaft key in, drop it down, lock it off. Alright, I just went below and pushed the rudder post up a bit. So now I'm going to lift the yoke to the very top of the key here, so it's centred on it. And then we'll lock these nuts off. Alright, it's in. Cool. Today's turning out a little bit better than yesterday. So, nuts are tightened up. I've got the pin in here between the ram and the yoke here. I've got to put a split pin and a washer in here. It's really important that you kind of do that stuff straight away because if you half finish a job like this, it's really easy to forget. So I'll definitely do that next week. Now the really important thing is that I get the steering centered because I'm going to attach the rudder to it. And you can attach the rudder, you know, multiple ways. I'll get the rudder straight now. That way, once the prop shaft's in and we put the rudder on, it's not going to be out of whack. I can't tell you how much better that steering feels now than when the original seized rudder and everything was in. It's awesome. Very happy about that. Cool. Steering straight and our four bolt holes for the rudder are aligned nicely for a straight rudder install as well. So we're all good to go there. Well, that's as far as I got before the battery went flat on the camera, unfortunately, and the charger stopped working as well. It's been one of those weeks. But I did actually get the prop shaft about half the way in. I think what might be happening now is I was supporting the prop end of the shaft because that was the heavy end and perhaps now it's come past the tipping point so instead of lifting the prop end I actually have to push it down to keep the shaft aligned so I can go in. I might look at finding something like dry ice a little bit colder than just the regular sort of party ice. I think it was making a big difference. It was definitely, you know, when it was on for half an hour it was definitely getting the shaft pretty cold. Once we get it all the way in to the thinner section, I think, you know, we're home and hose. It'll spin quite nicely when it gets there. It's just unfortunate that it's not a uniform diameter at the moment. So maybe that's a good sign that, you know, it's time to replace the prop shaft as well. Then I can get a prop shaft without a welded thread on so I can take the prop off, you know. I'll run with it for now, but there's a few reasons why perhaps next year it's worth replacing. All right, next week, lots more to do again. I'll drop that camshaft off. We'll try and get the engine, you know, one step closer to running again. Got lots to do with the electrics. That's been progressing really well. I've made a few tweaks to the design and I've also been talking with Jeff from Pacific Yacht Systems. They have a, a service where they assist DIY people from all around the world. So even if you can't get them to do your job directly, they can sort of help you with your design. So that's gonna be really good to make use of that service. Just to make sure it's spot on before we go and do the work. I've also got to finally get around to servicing those gate valves so we can get those back in. My plan now is actually to get the hull watertight as fast as I can, get the Detroit drop back in, and then get the boat towed out to the mooring. The mooring got laid during the week too, so that's ready to go. The sooner I get the boat on the mooring, the sooner I stop paying hard stand fees, which is money that can go towards other parts of the boat. And it also means that I have cooling water and the hull will be sitting in the water for a line in the prop. I can start trying to fire up the Detroit, all that kind of stuff. So I'm looking to really try and get it on the water as soon as I can. On another note, just reached 100,000 subscribers today. So thanks to everyone for subscribing. That was a nice sort of milestone to reach this morning. So I'm pretty happy about that. And uh, time to push on. All right, guys, take care and I'll catch you next week. See ya.